that had this huge business that employed 400 people that was turning millions of pounds a year. My ego was out here. I started making daily videos. No one was watching it. Just me. Just bloody me. And that was that makes it high barrier to entry. Influence opens doors. This is the biggest change that's happened in my business career is that you can now become an influencer. And that's always been around. It's just it was there for the privileged few. Now everyone can be an influencer. And I think you can be an influencer in 10 short years. I think it can take 10 years to build a real influential personal brand. And that's the journey that I'm on. I started it about 18 months ago, really investing heavily into it. The last two months, we've had more results than the first 16 months. And every week seems to get stronger and stronger as we do more and more. The whole point of investing time into building influence to open doors can really start to power open the opportunities for your organization. How do we do that? There's two types of marketing. There's content marketing, and then there's what I call call to action marketing. It's marketing that gets sales. Now, in reality, we need to be doing both. We need to make sure the sales come in to pay the bills, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I totally understand that. But in unison, the slow investment marketing via content is what really drives big profitable sales. So we've got to make create great content to win. Now, I'm producing every day a video and putting it out on the internet. I'm also producing podcasts. I bring out a magazine each month. I'm on my sort of the course of the next 12 months. I promised myself I'm going to bring out three books in the next 12 months. And I'm really pushing content. Because what we do with content marketing is this. We build relationships, gang. Whereas most marketeers, most people trying to sell, they're demanding sex on the first date. You know, you go on a date, first date, and you say, I like you, let's have sex. And really, we need to have a few dates before we go in for the sexy time. And really, that's what content marketing does. It builds relationships that last a long time, and rather than relying on sex on the first date. So great companies are building these great relationships. So, so this company is an operating company and a media company in unison. So, you know, for example, we run theme parks. Parks, Disney World, Disney Europe, Disney, all the things over there. So we run theme parks, we sell toys, you know, all the things there. They're a proper operating company, cruise ships, you know. These things are super duper successful because of the media and content they put out. Did Walt Disney realize when he wrote Snow White in 1940, whatever it was, that that content was going to drive all these operating companies? The reason Disney is so successful is because they started here and became here. Does that make sense? They started here and became here. What do most businesses do is they start here and don't even think that this is possible. So they become an operator. They, they could be a web company that stays as an operating web company. The smart thing for you to do is build a daily video or a webinar series or a podcast about your operating company because now we've got access to all these platforms. You know, we can get our podcast on Anchor and be on... Do, do you know what Anchor is, guys? So basically, Anchor, you upload your podcast to Anchor. It gets it on Spotify. It gets it on Apple. It gets it all very easy. It's free. It's so easy to do. So the operating company, really the entrepreneur, the business owner, and the CEOs that are smart in the world today need to be thinking we're a media company and an operating company. So I was, I was reading an article about Bob Iger. Bob Iger is the CEO of Disney and basically 67 years old. And the Disney board has just said to him, you can't retire, mate. You just, we're not letting you retire. Because over the last 10, 15 years, he's done some winning formulas. He's bought Marvel. He's bought Star Wars. He's bought Pixar. He's folded them into what I call his existing empire, the Disney empire, which has increased the media company that's making the operator company so easy. Because when you've got tons of content, you become the person or the company of influence. Your operating company becomes so easy to do. When you think about Disney can sell ice creams 
and sell the same toys as everyone else, but they put their content on those toys or those ice creams or the food they sell in their parks or even outside of their parks for an increased margin, they're winning. But they are winning because of tons and tons of content that's freely available around the world. Why do companies not want to think like this? Because it's a long ROI. It's not an immediate return on investment. You know, you think about the Disney journey. For the first 20, 30 years, it wasn't the super profit machine that it is today. It's a 100-year-old company. And I totally understand that. But that's building a company brand. What's far easier is to build a personal brand in 10 years rather than waiting for a couple of generations for the business brand to build up. Now, a big case in point is this bloke over here. When I was 15, I read one of my first business books um, by this bloke. Uh, I'll write his name up here. I don't know if you've heard of him over in... His name's Richard Branson. Have you guys... Do you know who he is? He's uh, I'm a Virgin. Sorry, sorry. He runs a company called Virgin... Which brand is now bigger, Richard Branson or Virgin? Um, I think we'd argue that Virgin is now the bigger brand. But for the first 10, 15 years, Richard was bigger than the Virgin brand. Because it's easier for CEOs, MDs, business owners to build a personal brand because we can relate to it than it takes to build a Louis Vuitton, a Gucci, a Disney, a Versace, an Apple. Or, you know, and, and you look, this stuff is happening. People want to buy from the big... Everyone knows that Tim Cook is the CEO of Apple. And they know that Steve Jobs was before. It's been happening for years, this process. This is what I want to get over. This stuff has been happening for years. It was to the privileged tiny few. That's what that says, guys, for a tiny few. What I'm really excited about is that it can happen now for everyone if we just start investing time it doesn't have to be cash, it's time. How do we actually get our followers? You need a back catalogue. That's one of the things that you need. Because, you know, like Beyonce's got all of her music. And that back catalogue of consistency builds brand. There's a magic in making a start, gang. And most people go, well, this is just too big a job. But you can start with tweets every day. Finding a 40 seconds to write a really good crafted, 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 hello, crafted tweet um, is the first stage of consistency. That's consistently doing it is the way to do it because that's what a media company does. Do you have any big soaps in Portugal? So we, we, have, uh, we have some big soaps in the United Kingdom or we have something called the X Factor. Does it, do you have, uh, you know, we have uh, Britain's Got Talent, but we have... Britain's Got Talent, it comes out every year. It's the consistency of the content, the soaps that get people brought in. It's the consistency of the content. Now, here's the good news. Because most people can't be bothered to consistently put out content, that's why you'll win. Because human beings are lazy. Only the very few will keep doing it. And they'll keep doing it for two years and have no one watching. I was making a video every single day. I had him follow me around with a video every single day. We get four views. Me nan, four times. Grandmama, thank you very much. One, two, three. And then granddad, my wife. And I was doing it and I was doing it. And I was getting nowhere. I was getting nowhere. I was getting nowhere. 12 months in, I had like 300 subscribers on YouTube. I had this huge business that employed 400 people that was turning millions of pounds a year. My ego was out here. I started making daily videos. No. No one was watching it. Just me. Just bloody me. And that, was, that makes it high barrier to entry. I love high barrier to entry stuff. So a high barrier to entry is, you know, saying I'm going to open a 500 bedroom hotel. Not everyone can do that. It's a high barrier to entry business. But when you do it, you've got a real chance of making money because not other people can compete with you. What I love about this whole thing is if you consistently do content, you will win if you keep doing it because most people will give up. They won't do it. They just will not do it. And people go, oh, I haven't got time. This bloke is doing tweets and videos and all this stuff all the time. And I guarantee he's busier than you. This other bloke called Elon Musk. I mean, he is on the social media, personal brand stuff all the time. Stevie Jobs. They're running multi-international companies when they were alive in the last case. 
And they were doing it and they found the time. See, that's the, that, that excuse isn't there. And most of us will walk out of here and go, yes, I'm going to start doing this. But the consistency won't be there and therefore you won't win. It's the people that do do it and build a back catalogue. When I say a back catalogue is when someone does discover you, they've got so much content they can carry on listening. So the new person that discovers Beyonce and goes, this is fantastic, I love this song, they can go and listen to another 200 songs. And that back catalogue in, sort of improves the brand. So like the first one or two videos, you know, it's high, and everything's like that. You've watched Toy Story 1, and there's now another three Toy Stories, and then there's all the other Disney films. That back catalogue builds the brand very, very quickly. So it's really important that there's a back catalogue. Influence comes in these ways. And all of these things push each other. So for me, it was writing a book, first of all. Then it was into videos. Then I started writing articles on Linky Dink and anywhere I could get my articles in newspapers, still doing newspapers. Then I started speaking like this stuff here. And I believe speaking on stage is a fantastic way of growing influence. I mean, we've shared, I mean, we've got another six hours to go, but we're going to be sharing some really lovely time together here today. And that will help build that relationship. So it allow all this stuff gets you influenced by doing good speaking gigs and then building a podcast. I think sound is really important. Um, who's an active listener of podcasts in the room? You, you just see that grow and grow and grow in the next five years because cars... The, the new modern cars that are coming out, they've all got the podcast button on them now, so the access is getting easier and easier. Sound is getting more and more popular. Audio books, um, they're, they're, you know, you've got to make sure that you're investing time in building sound as well. What do we do to build our followers, if you like? We have a mixture of long-form and short-form content, and I think this is really, really important. Short-form and long-form content. Which again, Disney do. You've got the Disney Channel for the 20 minute, 15 minute short shows, then the music, which is short form content. You're listening to the music on the way. Then you go and watch the films, which is long form content. There's a big mix of content. Success leaves clues, you know. So, what we will do is we're recording this keynote today, which is, you know, it's going to be about three hours long. So, that's a real long form content video. We'll upload that one to YouTube. So, we'll put a full keynote on YouTube. Because I want to leverage my time. So, this will go on there. Now, what we then do is we'll get this keynote and we'll take out maybe 15 short videos from it that last a minute. So, we'll have mini videos that we get out of the long-form content. Stuff that where I'm being over-energetic that breaks state on social media. We're going to talk about breaking state in a minute. Does anyone know what breaking state is? Ah! Like that. Yes. Breaking state. So. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? It's breaking state. I mean, I'm a master of it, ladies and gents. I'll take you up here, down here. I'm going to take my clothes off to finish today. Just like that, you'll be, oh my God. Well, also, a tweet could be short-form content, and an article can be long-form. A podcast will be long-form. You're asking for someone for half an hour of your time. A 10, 15-minute video could be long-form content when people are busy on social media. So it's important that you've got a mixture of 30, 40, 50, not even 60-second videos that bring people in. That you know, Because asking someone to go, oh, listen to my podcast, it's 45 minutes long, and they've never heard of you before. Come on, what planet are you living on? If you think that no one has never heard of you before, it's just going to, yeah, I'm going to listen to 45 minutes of this, yeah. Whatever. You need to make sure that the short form content breaks state. Ah! That stuff brings people in to then watch the long form content. So it's really important. There's a mixture of short form and long form. This is very, very important that we have a mixture as soon as we can, that we build joint ventures and collaborations. So if you know anyone that's building, you should be on podcasts all the time. If you're a CEO of a company, you know, go and find the most popular podcast ever, and you can bring people in and love you. One of the people that has done... So <coughs> 
Phil Knight wrote a book called Shoe Dog. Has anyone read Shoe Dog in this room? So basically, it's about the creator, the, the guy that started Nike. Um, it's a fabulous, fabulous business book. Uh, and it really goes through the pains and sufferings of building Nike to the company that it is today and how tough it was for them to build that up. After reading that book, I've become a Nike super fan. I've become a Nike super fan. Now, here's the thing about building a personal brand. I want to be absolutely honest with you. A base talent and a want to do it is essential. If you are boring on camera, hello, this is my podcast. This is my video. I'm going to be talking about web marketing today. And we're going to go through why headings are so important. These fonts are my favorite. And this font's very nice as well. Have a look at this. WordPress is my favorite thing to build websites on. Just think, why? That is not your core base talent. Maybe, in that case, you would be better at writing articles. Because we all have some natural talents. What's the other thing that I really think is smart to do? Get over yourself and think, yeah, I'm actually not very good at that. Let's actually employ a C-Lab celebrity... And they'll be around, and they're very cheap to get, that everyone would instantly recognize. You know, when you think about it, if you're a big company, you could pay someone 5, 10, 15, 20,000 euros a year to be the face of your company, make sure they're a good person, that have got loads of personality. They could be doing the influential stuff for you. Again, not new. This has been happening for years. It's just people are not bothering to pick up the phone and saying, can you do this for my startup? There is opportunities to do things like that. But if you do have a base talent, and I'm not saying you have to be a complete loon like me. I mean, I love being on camera. I love being on the stage. This to me, ladies and gentlemen, mwah, mwah, is my place to be. I love the thing. Not everyone likes it. You know, some people have a fear of being on here. I have a fear of not being on here. That's the, the real ca case for me. So if you've got a base talent, you've got to use it. And if you haven't, then see if you're really good. And don't just ask your family. Ask someone that's really critical and say, am I any good at this? And if they say, no, you're a bit naff, then don't do it. But find someone that is good that can collaborate with you. So base talent is essential because I don't want to see people spending hours and hours and days and days doing stuff and they're just... Shit. Um, sorry, that's a swear word there. Um, how do we grow our audience? That was the joint ventures and the collaborations. This is very, very important. Um, and here's the thing that I massively believe, and this is my little punt to entrepreneurs and business owners and entrepreneurs and leaders. Don't be scared of still doing stuff face-to-face. -face. You know, I've got a very big company now. We employ a lot of people. We're over different locations. And whenever possible, I would always choose to have a cup of tea with someone or a cup of coffee in this country with someone and a face-to-face -face meeting to really cement and build a relationship. Just sending someone a direct message on Instagram or Facebook, or that, that might work. My direct message is, hey, can we meet for a cup of coffee on me? Or I'll take you out for dinner. I have formed the best relationships and the best business deals by still believing in face-to-face -face stuff. It's just my personal opinion. So many people want to do everything at speed and they want to just get things over the line, but I believe in still face-to-face -face relationships and that's just something that, you know, for a man that's doing so much socially, so much digitally, I still prefer doing face-to-face -face relationships. And if I can't do that, I still pick up the phone and say, hello, let's have a conversation. The big thing that I want to leave you with is, remember that all marketeers break state. So when I come on stage, I do some funny stuff. I don't go straight into content. I want you to know that I'm a bit weird. I want you to know that I'm a bit unusual when everyone else before me has been usual. It's not being horrible. I know I'm unusual. I leverage off of that unusualness, that weirdness, that Oh my God, he chatted me up. I'm not even gay. I just thought it'd be funny and get people, what's going on here? You know, I break state and that's my thing for marketing. I want to break state so that you just think, oh my word, and then you listen. Then I bring you in and then you listen. I take you on a tonality roller coaster. I bring my body down here. Why has he just gone down there? That's a bit weird. I kiss the stage. I bring things in to bring you back in. Because it's boring listening to stuff. And we're only like halfway through. We've got another couple of hours to go. <laughs> I'll take it. So lastly, our oh, great Martin breaks states. 
And that they do this, is that's how you get attention. You know, I'm a man that, um, you know, I've got a lot of property, I've got a lot of assets, I love assets and property, and I'm starting to think now, is attention, is people's eyeballs the biggest asset that we can own now? And that is changing all the time. And so I'm looking at all of our properties and all the physical assets that we've got. And I'm thinking, in 10 years' time, is my personal brand, this thing that I'm building now, going to be worth more than all of that? And I think that is the world that we're coming into. And the great news is, it doesn't really cost anything. It's just time, effort, and consistency of building that personal brand. And if you do it every day, within 10 years, it's nothing. 10 years, you know, if anyone got children, you know, they go one to 10, like overnight, hello, you know. I just think it's really, really amazing that we have that opportunity to build that and then leverage off of that. Um, and ladies and gents, hopefully, has, there, has anyone added me on YouTube? Has anyone followed me on YouTube? You'll see all the, we'll bring the keynote out. Thank you, one, two. Um, we're not leaving until everyone does it, by the way. So, Frederico, let's close the doors and let's get them gunmen in. Um, we're just going to come up. What, get your phone out, smartphone out. Add me on YouTube, James Sinclair. We're not leaving until you do it, my love. That's it. I've got all the time in the world. That's it. Let me look. Bring it up here, please. Come up here. Come up here. That's it. Let me see. Let me see. J-A-M-E-S. The reason no one's sitting next to her, she's been blowing off all afternoon. I, that's it. Thank you. Have you found me? Hit subscribe. You're going to have 300 hours of great. Yes! There's some great content on there. There's no adverts. There's no selling. It's just great content. I talk about all the things that I've done. I really hope you've enjoyed this. Frederico, thank you very much for having me here in Spain. Portugal! 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 Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gents. See you very soon. Bye-bye! <laughs>